Hello everyone, welcome back to On The Fly. Today we're going to be recapping the quarterfinal action of the men's Olympic hockey event. Uh, so jumping right into it with the scores from today, we're going to start off with Russia beating Denmark 3-1. to one. So in this game, Russia did dominate pretty much from start to finish. Uh, very similarly to their victory in the preliminary round when they, played, when they beat Denmark 2 to nothing. Uh, it was another dominant effort by the Russians and Denmark really, although they did uh, stay within two goals, it, it wasn't necessarily a game where Denmark felt like they were in it. Uh, obviously on the outside with a very star-studded team like the Russians. Um, and, and this was just another game where Russia sort of is just going to dominate in this tournament, uh, having by far the best team here. Uh, I do expect Russia to continue their success uh, well into the finals, and uh, especially with playing a team like Sweden, uh, I think the Swedes are going to be their biggest test yet, because uh, they did have to play the Czechs, and they also had to play the Swiss. Uh, in terms of and and, uh, and Denmark in their own division, uh, but at the end of the day, I think uh, when you take a look at where Russia sort of sits, uh, it's sort of in that top two teams. Uh, I'd argue Finland and uh, Russia uh, are basically the two best teams of this tournament. Uh, and then you look at Sweden as sort of a, a, an underdog favorite here, uh, knocking off the Canadians. We will get to that a little bit later on, uh, as obviously it was a very sad day for many Canadian fans. Uh, but also American fans as they also got knocked out, but we'll get to that in a little bit. Uh, jumping right back into the Russia game, uh, it was really just sort of domination by the Russians. Uh, Denmark was in it, but they weren't, uh, and at the end of the day, Russia did pull through uh, with a 3-1 to victory, pushing them into the semifinal round. Uh, and that guarantees them a spot for a, a medal game, uh, whether that's against in the gold or in the bronze medal game. And it is going to be very curious to see what goes on there uh, uh, with the next game coming up. Uh, between Finland uh, and you also had Switzerland. So in this game, once again, another dominant effort by the Finns, winning five to one. Uh, and in this game, once again, Finland dominated uh, very similarly to the Russians, except they really did dominate this game. Uh, Switzerland has put up a pretty good effort uh, the past few games, uh, but unfortunately, it was not enough to even come close to the Finns. Uh, they did get outskilled once again in this game, uh, and they did win five to one as a result. Uh, moving on to the American game between Slovakia and America. Uh, so it was a 3-2 to two shootout victory for the Slovaks. Uh, and this game was definitely a game for the ages. Uh, very close game right up until the end. Slovakia scoring with just under a minute left to play in the third. Uh, forcing overtime and then finally winning in a shootout. Uh, it was really a great game by the Slovaks. And they're going to hope to continue their success. Uh, coming up against Team Finland. Uh, and really look for uh, Juraj Slavkovsky. Uh, who's just a teenager, an 18 year old guy uh, who's going to be draft eligible coming this year uh, and expect him to keep going because obviously he has a, had a great tournament so far uh, and he is the real deal. Uh, this guy has proven himself this year uh, against top end competition and he just continues to put up goals and assists. Uh, and he is going to be quite the force in the NHL for years to come. I am looking forward to seeing what he has left in the tank against Team Finland because uh, they are going to have to heavily rely upon him uh, as obviously their team is not uh, to the caliber of a team like Finland is. Uh, and I do expect them to do very similarly to that of 2010 uh, where they come close, they, they knock off a surprise. Uh, and then they end up losing consecutive games uh, in the semifinal and the bronze medal. With that being said, never count them out. I counted them out twice here, uh, and they did beat both teams. So uh, it is going to be very curious to see what goes on here. Uh, they do have the power to dominate teams, uh, but they are going to play that sort of collapsing style of defense, not allowing any uh, tight range, high quality shots. Uh, and if they are going to come, they're going to come from the point. Uh, so Finland is going to have to get their heavy shooters out. Uh, and that is going to sort of favor them a little bit more. Because obviously Finland is a better shooting team than the Americans are. Uh, where the Americans sort of play that North American style where they pass the puck around. Finland is more of a shooting team. And they are going to probably do a little bit better. Uh, but definitely to keep an eye on it. Patrick Rybar, the goalie for Slovakia, has been absolutely incredible. Uh, and he is going to look to continue his success against Team Finland. Uh, so moving on to the last game of the day, and this is a very sad note for Canadians fans with losing 2-0 to nothing to Team Sweden. Uh, and this Olympics has been sort of a disappointment for Team Canada, especially in the men's event. Uh, obviously, you still have the women to go tonight. They are going to do great, I hope. Uh, and obviously, they do dominate these tournaments, so it is going to be very uh, good to see them in gold medal action because they are going to play the U.S. Uh, and it is definitely going to be a good game between those two teams, uh, whether or not Canada wins. Who knows, it's sort of that 50-50 coin flip, uh, although this year I think they are slightly favored. Uh, but with that being said, jumping right back into the men's event, uh, we have Sweden knocking off Canada 2-0. Uh, 
Uh, in this game, it was very tight. Obviously, Sweden did have a few more chances uh, and better high quality chances uh, to score on Matt Tompkins. But at the end of the day, uh, he kept them in the game and the end goal was really it was really one nothing off a bad giveaway, uh, and that sort of was the end of the game. They they couldn't uh, really muster any other strength, uh, and they just sort of got pegged outside the zone. They couldn't even get the zone with the empty net, uh, and that was sort of the end result was two to nothing. So uh, taking a look at Canada, first time not making they not meddling uh, since 2006 in Torino. Uh, so they are definitely feeling the effects of no NHL players, same as the Americans did. Uh, and they are going to definitely try and repeat next year uh, a little bit better because obviously they have come in with quite the history, uh, winning in 2014 and 2010, both with the gold uh, and obviously the bronze medal last year, or sorry, four years ago rather. Um, but at the end of the day, Canada knocked, knocked off by the Swedes and the Swedes did play great. Uh, I do expect them to do great things, although I do expect sort of that gold, uh, bronze medal. Uh, it is going to be very hard to get past the solid Russian team. Uh, but this game between the Russians and the Swedes is going to be very exciting uh, and very entertaining. So I do definitely recommend that's the game to watch. Uh, Slovakia and Finland maybe is going to be a close game. But at the end of the day, I definitely do favor the Finns quite heavily. Um, just, just the way Slovakia plays versus the way Finland plays. You know, I look at Germany and the U.S. They play very similar sort of quick pass games, uh, whereas Finland is more of a shooting team. Uh, and you'll sort of see that when you look at shots wise, they'll have 30 plus shots a night, uh, where the US is going to be a little bit more contained and they're gonna sort of try and get the puck, they're gonna try and force plays. Uh, but at the end of the day, Slovakia, Finland, Sweden, Russia are going to be your semi-final matchups. Uh, and just sort of taking a look at when those are, we're gonna take a look at Finland and Slovakia come out on February 17th at 11.10 a.m., or sorry, p.m. rather, Eastern Standard Time. Uh, Russia and the Swedes at 8.10 uh, a.m. on February 18th. So uh, just sort of the semifinal matchups once again, going to be a very good day uh, of hockey. Uh, and I do hope uh, for some good games, obviously. Uh, not having the Canadians in it is going to suck a little bit more. Uh, and it is going to hurt because obviously this is the first time since 06 uh, where we haven't seen uh, Canada be in some of these semifinal actions, obviously with them making medals every year. Uh, not even having the NHL players there is going to hurt them a great ton. Uh, I do hope for 2024 uh, that, or sorry, 2026 rather, so long, um, that Canada is going to get their NHL players back. They are going to dominate the game as they always do. Uh, but of course, that still relies on the NHL commissionary. Uh, and I do hope that they finally figure it out and actually allow players to be sent there. Uh, taking a look at these sort of the standings. So these aren't really official, but uh, the way they sort of seed it out is going to be the US in fifth, Canada in sixth, seventh for Denmark, eighth for the Swiss, nine for the Czech Republic, 10 for Germany, 11 for Latvia, and 12 for China. So uh, just another great day of hockey. I do hope for a little bit better results uh, and a lot closer games because obviously these few, last few days have been amazing hockey. Uh, I do hope for many more to come. If you made it this far in the video, thanks for watching. If you like it, drop a like. If you really liked it, consider subscribing. Tell all your friends to comment down below your thoughts on quarterfinal action on the men's Olympic hockey event. Until next time, see ya.